Before we get into today's video, I want to let you know that you could support us over on Patreon.com slash Nintendo Prime. There's a link to it down in the description. For $5 a month, you can get early access to our podcast, the full audio podcast, a full day before we put, start posting it in parts here on YouTube. Uh, for $20 a month, you can also be a guest on the podcast and actually get your face and your voice out in front of thousands of Nintendo fans. Now, if you don't have any money, that's okay. We understand. That's why we partnered up with Gawkbox.com. If you go to Gawkbox.com slash Nintendo Prime, again, link in the description, all you have to have is your mobile device and you can do what is called sponsored tips. So you go in, you install apps, you play some of these games, it costs you absolutely nothing, you do it all on your mobile device, and you create an account there for free, of course, and it gives us tips between, you know, from anywhere from 30 cents and 50 cents up to $10 or more, depends on how much effort or what apps you are using at the time. So again, it's a free way, it costs you absolutely nothing to support us, check that out in the description below. So we're going to talk about Doom. I don't know if that's much of a surprise given that there was an embargo lifted today and there's a ton of Doom footage out there running on Nintendo Switch. And throughout this video, we're going to have various clips from a whole bunch of different videos that I have seen myself. Uh, I will have links to the full videos in the description below. And I encourage you to go check out those full videos because you're going to get hands-on impressions, which is something I cannot give you because I was not at this press event. Um, and you're going to get you know, uh, more detailed analysis. I have a video down there, a link from Digital Foundry, where they talk about their hands-on impressions, and they also talk about the footage that we have gotten so far uh, from the uh, Nintendo Direct, and then they also go into creating a computer that is essentially specced the exact same as the Switch and running the game there and seeing what the results are and kind of cross-comparing to their own experience with the game uh, to give you a better feel since direct feed footage was not allowed to be recorded of this game. It was only off-screen, off the, the portable mode, uh, in most cases tabletop mode, for Switch. So, yeah, that's just kind of the way they handled this press event. There was no docked mode available and no docked footage allowed to be recorded. So... Let's talk about this game, and let's talk about it because there appears to be uh, a lot of mixed feelings on it, and it's really weird. So, if you guys remember way back in the day, this isn't even that long ago, a month back, I was heavily defending NBA 2K18, and the way that they decided to approach the game with visual fidelity and cutting the frame rates down to 30, and obviously you'll know when NBA 2K18 came out, I had some criticism of it, and the frame rate was actually one of them, uh, specifically because it's not very consistent. And it turns out that there's actually frame rate issues on all versions of NBA 2K18, and it, it, it might turn out that NBA 2K18 is actually one of the worst NBA 2K games in quite a while. In fact, so bad that there are some people that actually prefer NBA Live 18 for the first time in a decade or so. So it's very interesting seeing what's happening with that game. So it might just appear that that game in general has some issues. Now what we know about Doom is very interesting. So based on Digital Foundry and some other outlets out there that did some analysis, we know the game does not run at native 720p in handheld mode. In fact, it appears to be running on what, what looks like a dynamic scaler. So it might scale up to 720p at times and downscale down to, you know, 540p or, or 500p. You know, it, it'll kind of bounce around uh, to try to maintain a stable 30 FPS. And I know that 30 FPS is what is causing a lot of the controversy. So is the fact that it's not a locked 720p in, in uh, portable mode because the original Doom ran at 60 FPS. And I know what you're saying. I said the same thing about NBA 2K. The difference is, is that with NBA 2K, we didn't have any footage of the game, right? They pretty much kept the game under wraps until, you know, a day or two before release when they finally had press events. Well, now we have footage of Doom shortly, you know, a week after it was announced, essentially. And not only do we have footage, we have actual impressions from people who played it people who have experienced playing doom you know some of the footage you'll see here you can clearly tell it's people who know what they're doing in doom and some of the footage are going to be clearly from people who have never played it so you're going to kind of get both perspectives watching all this footage in the video and here's what we learned the game apparently looks fantastic 
They're, they're like, and this is in portable, so it's going to look even better in docked mode. But it looks fantastic, and the the frame rate is super smooth. Uh, there are a couple frame drops, and that that happens in instances where you have five or more enemies on screen at once. And it's not like it's so bad it's unplayable. It's just like a very small. Uh, frame rate drop in portable mode and that frame rate drop might not even exist if you play this in docked mode at all in fact the, you know maybe the resolution is locked at 720p or 1080p when it's docked because the switch does run at higher clock speeds then we don't know because they weren't able to test that but there's been a lot of backlash i was going through this thread on neogaf and on reddit and so many people are like, LOL, LOL, can't even run at 720p, LOL, can't even run at 60 FPS, LOL, 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 And they're ignoring what everyone who went hands-on with this game had to say about it. So, here's the deal. A lot of people that went hands-on with this game weren't even sure if it was running at 30 FPS. They were actually kind of thinking it might be 60 at the time. And you know why? You know why they said that? Because... Well, we all prefer 60. Even if you say, I don't care about 30 and 60, trust me, you'd rather it still be 60 than 30, even if you think you don't care. They couldn't tell because the gameplay was that smooth. On mobile technology, the gameplay was that smooth. It, it's insane that there were people that actually thought it was running at 60 at the event because it is running at 30. People who finally reviewed their footage and did some frame counting it runs at 30 FPS. But people were, were so confused while they're playing it that it tells you how little the, the drop to 30 FPS matters in the form factor of the Nintendo Switch. And I'm not going to sit here and say you're not, you're, you are terrible if you're going to chastise this game because you want 60 FPS, you want 60 FPS. Look, if you want AAA third party games at 60 FPS, you probably are not playing them on Switch. I'm just being honest. Uh, if you want AAA 60 FPS games, you probably might not even be playing them on PlayStation 4 and Xbox. You honestly should go buy a gaming PC. And I'm not saying that as a PC Master Race thing or a woe is you, you run off to that better system. I'm just being honest with you. If you want AAA high fidelity games at 60 FPS or higher, that's what gaming PCs are for. I have a gaming PC. I play games at 60 FPS or higher. I play games at under 60 FPS because I rather push the visual fidelity for certain titles. Uh, surprisingly, World of Warcraft is one of those titles that even on my GTX 1070, I push the ultra settings and just sacrifice down to 30 FPS. Instead of running at the 100 plus FPS I can if I just dropped a couple settings. Even to drop resolution, and I'm running that at 4K. So, yeah, it's... You could do some crazy things with gaming PCs, but this is a tablet using mobile technology running Doom and running it so well that on that screen, on that little portable screen, people had a hard time telling it was even running at 30 FPS in the first place during gameplay. We need to listen more to the people that are going hands-on with these games because it's one thing to think that the drop to 30 FPS and the 720p thing is this is this you know huge deal, but when the people went hands on with it, like, look, it doesn't matter. The game is running fantastic. It looks amazing, and it was so hard to tell it was running at 30. Anyways, that lets you know that it's really not that big of a deal in the form factor that this game has taken. And we learned obviously through this process that the game is. Uh, this port was handled by Panic Button, who are being labeled as essentially Switch port experts. Uh, Rocket League's also being handled by them. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they're also handling the port of Wolf of Sign 2, the new Colossus. Uh, they apparently are becoming quickly a go-to company for third-party game ports on Switch. Uh, they obviously know what they're doing. Because based on some of the footage, obviously some of the footage is going to be grainy. I mean, we're looking at off-screen footage of a tiny screen being blown up on YouTube. Uh, it's obviously not going to be that good. Bad lighting situations there. There's a lot of noise, a lot of whatever. It, it's it's a not the ideal recording situation, even for off-screen footage. But it's still one of those things where people have consistently come away from this saying, it's impressive. It's visually stunning. It you know the 30 fps drop you think would matter but it really doesn't seem to matter uh this is people on the outside looking in and i'm one of you i'm one of the people on the outside looking in are, are just so quick to find any possible reason to tear down games on nintendo switch and there are some valid ones i brought up valid valid uh, criticism of nba 2k 18 on switch there are valid 
reasons to attack certain games on Nintendo Switch, but this is not one of them. Everyone knows that third-party games coming to Switch are not going to be as visually impressive as uh, resolution-intensive, you know, 900p, 1080p, whatever, 4K on the 4K consoles, and they're not necessarily going to have the same frame rates as the games on hardware that's significantly more powerful than Switch. I mean, come on, you're not going to take those experiences and make them the exact same on Switch. And I think the expectation for that is absolutely ridiculous. What people have to realize is that when you bring multi-platform AAA third-party games to switch there are going to be sacrifices and the question is obviously if those sacrifices are worth it you know with nba 2k18 i would have liked to see them maybe you know drop back on the visuals a little bit and give us a 60 fps or even if they're <laughs> even if they're going to stick with 30 at least give us a consistent 30 fps especially in my career my career apparently has fps issues on all versions of the game but on switch it's even worse and it would have been nice for them to fix that now granted this is an issue across all games so just dropping back to visuals probably wouldn't have fixed it uh they must have had some massive coding issues and did not do a very good job quality checking because the initial you know first half hour of my career in nba 2k18 works just fine but then once you get beyond that it starts really really crapping the bed but whatever like that was just a personal preference of mine uh with doom you have people who have lots of experience playing this at 60 FPS, playing it on PC, playing at max settings, and they're all saying it's so great. And I'm watching this footage for myself, so I'm able to judge for myself if I think what they're saying uh, backs up. Now, obviously, I'm not getting as good of a viewpoint as they are. It's going to look way better in person than it's going to look in a compressed video online in a bad lighting situation, blown up on YouTube uh, when it's such a tiny screen. I mean, the video I'm staring at right now, as I'm talking about this of Doom, uh, literally the screen is blown up bigger than the screen is on my actual Switch. So it's just not uh, an ideal situation. I'm able to look at this and able to be as, I guess, as objective as I possibly can and just say, damn, this looks good. It looks smooth. It looks really, really good. Is it going to look as good as the other consoles? No. But the sacrifices they made, I think, are correct. Because Doom is a game where, yes, I understand that 60 FPS is a big deal in shooters. I'm not going to ever downplay 60 FPS. I want 60 FPS and everything. But Doom is one of those games that it's one of those blood and guts and gore games where there is some importance on the visual aspect of the blood guts and gore that's kind of what made this doom game in 2016 it was not the greatest shooter in the world but the blood guts the gore the the kind of thing that that really doom can get away with uh needs some better visuals in my opinion to make the game what it is and it appears that the visuals on this are good they, they are on par if not a little better than low settings on pc they don't approach medium settings, but they're kind of the happy medium between low and medium. Uh, there is some draw distance on it, which isn't even really a thing on the lows. Like the lowest PC settings, you know, the Switch version actually looks better than the lowest possible PC settings. Uh, so as I said, it's kind of an in-between low and medium. It looks really, really good. The frame rate is pretty dang consistent. And again, this is undocked mode. This isn't docked mode. And again, we don't know, you know, does docked mode somehow get up to medium settings? That would be crazy if that happened, because certain that that's kind of what PlayStation 4 and Xbox One run at. But it's just this idea that Doom is this terrible port, and it's a prime example of why people should not buy Switches. It's just baffling to me, and I understand there's haters out there, but even people who own Switches, I've seen, you know, getting upset about this. And maybe it's because of NBA 2K18. I think NBA 2K18 might have tainted people's opinion of multi-platform third-party games on Switch that run at 30 FPS just because of how uh, janky that, that game actually runs. And I still play NBA 2K18. Like, I still really enjoy it. But I think because of how that game turned out, people are worried. And Doom doesn't appear to be anything remotely close to what NBA 2K18 is. It looks like a smooth experience all the way through from what people have played uh, there are people that have played hours of this game, a couple plus hours. Uh, Nintendo World Report was able to put up a ha almost a half hour worth of footage of the game because they weren't able to record the entire time, of course. And it's just, it's awesome to me that this is coming to Switch, that we're also getting the new Colossus. And as um, as IGN pointed out, I'm going to have another video on this too in, uh, later, you know, how third parties are running out of excuses. I think fans are running out of excuses. 
to uh, to criticize Switch. So now they just got to come up with excuses. Because Doom, yes, lower resolution, lower graphics, lower frame rate. That's to be expected. Any multi-platform game coming to Switch, those are the three things that are going to happen. What matters is, does it run at a consistent frame rate? Does the visuals have a consistency to them? And is the game smooth? If all the answers, if it checks all three of those boxes, that's a worthwhile third-party port to me. And I feel like most people that are going to buy games on Switch are buying them with the understanding that, no, it's not the best-looking version ever, but they don't care because the convenience of taking it anywhere and using it at TV is well worth it to you over having the better visuals. And I feel like the better these third-party games sell on Switch, maybe the bigger uh, beating that these dev developers will take, but look, we don't need to invest $500 million or whatever. I know it's an exaggeration into a new triple a game that has the highest visual quality ever. And then sacrifices and gameplay elements because people would rather have convenience, you know, over the highest possible visuals in the world. So that's just me, just my take a little salty on this whole thing, but, uh, yeah, I'd like to know your guys' take on doom. Go watch that footage, go get the impressions, uh, give me your own thoughts on what Doom looks like on Switch. I think it looks fantastic. I think it is, again, I said this before with NBA 2K, but I'm going to, I definitely mean this with Doom. This is how third party ports should be happening on Switch. This is fantastic. I, if this is how all multi platform third party ports were in the future, I am okay with that. Anyways. I'm Nathaniel Ruffle Jets from Nintendo Prime. If you like this video, you know what to do. If you dislike the video, hit that dislike button. Subscribe for more. And folks, I will catch you in the next one.